Is ESP32 Bluetooth Low Energy really power efficient? How does it compare with Wi-Fi? And with a dedicated BLE beacon? Power is a precious good in battery operated devices. Today we will investigate how much power an ESP32 burns in normal mode using Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, in deep sleep and in mixed scenarios where it sleeps and sends data every few seconds. Rietzi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode around sensors and microcontrollers. But let's start with a simple. How much power does the ESP32 use with a blink sketch? As usual, I use Dave Jones' microcurrent gold. I was asked a few times why I talk about milli or microamperes, but my instruments show millivolts. Is this because Dave the inventor of the microcurrent lives in Australia and therefore on the other side of the world. Down there they mixed anyway a few other things. For example Christmas is in summer and they drive obviously on the wrong side of the road. No, of course not. Dave did everything right. If we measure current we usually use a resistor and Ohm's law. A resistor, often called shunt, is inserted in one power line. Then we connect the voltmeter across this resistor, measure the volts and calculate the current flowing through the resistor. Simple. Unfortunately only for decent currents. Let's measure the current of the ESP32 with a blink sketch. It draws about 38 milliampere, as my fluke shows. Let's check the built-in resistor in the fluke meter. To do that, we connect a second meter across the fluke. We measure around 70 mV. R is therefore around 2 ohms. If we start at 3.3 volt sharp at the power supply, we lose 70 mV in the fluke and still have nearly 3.3 volts at the ESP32. No problem. Let's now switch the range of the fluke to microampere. Now we measure 1.6 volt and the fluke goes into overload. Why that? The fluke uses a much higher resistor for the microampere range because it still wants to get about the same voltage for the voltmeter. Therefore the resistor has to be about 1000 times larger and the voltage drop becomes significant. If we do the same calculation we start at 3.3 volts but lose now 1.6 volts and the ESP32 only gets 1.7 volts. This is not enough to run and it continually crashes. Bad. Dave solved this problem. He built an amplifier which amplifies the voltage measured across the resistor by a factor of 100. Now he can work with much smaller resistors. For the milliampere range he uses a 0.01 ohm resistor and for the microampere range still one of 10 ohms. Much much smaller than the fluke. So we will not lose any noticeable voltage across Dave's resistors. And the output of the microcurrent gold is in millivolts of course. 1 millivolt equals 1 milliampere for most of our today's measurements. That is the whole miracle. Unfortunately, not only the current measuring adds resistance, but also the other wires from the power supply to the ESP chip. Today we use a bare VROM32 module. We do not want to be disturbed by the different chips which populate a typical development board. These chips need much more current than the ESP32 itself during deep sleep. If you want to run on batteries, always use a bare bone ESP32 module not a development board. I use a Life Epo 4 battery for my tests to have stable power supply without any reference to earth and without any ripple. Fully charged its voltage is 3.6 volts which is good. For the experiments I discharged it to 3.3 volts. If we use long or thin wires to power our ESP32 it will also start to crash. But because the ESP32, other than the ESP8266, has a so-called brownout detector, it shows the reason in serial. 
This detector protects the chip from getting unstable because of too low voltage and initiates a clean reset at voltages below about 2.4 to 2.7 volts at the chip. If you get this message, your power supply is not good enough. This happens primarily if you use Wi-Fi, as we will see later. Now we are ready to start our journey. As seen before, the standard blink sketch uses around 40 mA. Of course, I did not connect an LED because it would disturb our measurements. I just kept the sketch as close as possible to the original. You can add your LEDs later if you want. If we zoom in, we see that the current used is not at all constant. It varies a lot because the CPU obviously not always needs the same amount of current. For today, we are not interested in these patterns. Now we can change the sketch slightly. Instead of a delay, I include a while loop with some number crunching to keep the CPU busy. Now it consumes 58 mA. By the way, did you recognize it? We do not need the yield command anymore. The ESP32 does not crash, because of its two cores, I assume. Good to know. Now we replace the delay by deep sleep. Of course, this sketch would not blink the LED anymore. The ESP never reaches the second part of the loop, because it boots after deep sleep. Of course, we could make this sketch work, because we are makers. But today, we have no interest in blinking LEDs. And we have to go on. Let's look at the current consumption. Now it varies over time. One second, nearly no current, then the ESP boots and in three steps needs more and more current. Finally, it falls to sleep again. And the current is neglectable for this experiment. One pass takes about 220 milliseconds. If we disable the boot messages by tying GPIO 15 to low, the boot process is only 20 milliseconds faster. The average current would be around 10 mA as you see here, four times less than before. So far, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth were off. Let's now transfer an MQTT message via Wi-Fi to a broker. I use the PubSub library and send one message containing the MAC address of the device. Here we see the resulting curve and current consumption. We see a similar behavior than the ESP8266. The processor boots and starts to send some high-energy Wi-Fi signals, which use up to 300 mA. This is why brownouts are more probable if we use Wi-Fi. If you do not have an excellent power supply, or your power cables are thin and long, you need to connect a 1000 microfarad capacitor across VCC and ground, to avoid these reboots. As we saw before, my oscilloscope can integrate the yellow curve. You see at the end of the signal that one message used about 480 milliamperes times seconds. We will see later what this means. Of course, we are curious how this compares to the new Bluetooth low energy standard. I again can use a sketch from Anthony Elder to build a simple BLE beacon. Its name is ESP32. Here we see it on our smartphone in NRF Connect. And here we see the current consumption. The first thing we see is that it took about 800 milliseconds to send the message. Secondly, we see no current spikes, even if the transmitter sent some stuff as we saw on our smartphone. Why is that? The output power of the transmitter in Wi-Fi mode is much higher than in Bluetooth. 0 dBm is 1 mW. 20 dBm is 100 mW. So the reach of Bluetooth should also be smaller. Not 100 times, for sure. But this is stuff for another video. The total power consumption is only 84 mA seconds, which is roughly five times smaller. Most of this current is used during the boot process and the two commands BLE begin and BLE end. I do not know if these commands are already optimized for energy consumption, but we have to take them as they are for now. 
Next, I add a few more bytes to the name and rename the beacon to Hallelujah, because I'm so happy that it runs now. We see that the energy consumption is higher. So I assume that it increases with the size of the payload. We know now that our ESP32 uses five times less energy if we use BLE instead of Wi-Fi. There were discussions about assigning a fixed IP address to our ESP to speed up the connection. In my case, this did not work. It even took longer, but I don't know why. The next interesting question is, of course, how our ESP compares with a real beacon. For that, I used this device and connected the microcurrent gold. I only noticed very short signals and I had to switch the range of the microcurrent to the microampere range. The time the device consumes noticeable current is below 10 milliseconds. All in all, the beacon uses 6.5 microampere times seconds for one message, which is 7300 times less energy than the ESP32. Now I understand why these small devices should run a year on a very tiny battery and transmit signals every second. So we see that our ESP32 would make a miserable beacon, at least compared with a specialized device. Of course, our ESP32 has much more capabilities, so I do not throw it away. Which battery would be big enough to run an ESP32 for a year as a beacon. To calculate this figure, we need a last measurement, the deep sleep current. With my setup, I measure 4.23 microampere, which is pretty close to the five microampere of the datasheet. If we send a message every hour, we need 3600 times five microampere equals 18 milliampere times seconds for the deep sleep. If we add the 84 milliampere seconds for the message, we get 102. A year has 8760 hours. If we multiply these hours by the 102 milliampere seconds, we get roughly 900,000 milliampere seconds. When we convert this number back to milliampere hours, we get 250. This corresponds to two of these LIR2450 or 110440 Lion batteries. Still okay for a sensor which transmits its results via Bluetooth instead of Wi Fi. And how big or small is the sleep current of the beacon? It is so tiny I was not able to measure it. Summarized, we had to find a way to measure low currents without disturbing the circuit too much and used Dave's microcurrent gold. We learned that standard multimeters are not well suited to measure current. They easily crash our ESPs. To avoid this effect, we should add a big capacitor to all our barebone ESP32 modules, just as a precaution. We started with a standard blink sketch and found that the ESP32 uses a current of 38 milliampere. If we changed the code and replaced the delay with number crunching, the current consumption increased by 50%. Then we optimized the blink by replacing the delay with deep sleep. Now we were down to 10 milliampere. Sending one MQTT message via Wi-Fi needed an average of 48 milliampere for one message every 10 seconds. Next we built a BLE beacon and measured the required current. This time sending one message every 10 seconds only needed 8.4 milliampere average. Then we compared our ESP32 beacon with a professional one. The ESP32 is the loser because the true beacon uses 7300 times less current. BLE has a much lower output power and also a shorter range. I will test this in a future video. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.